How can we escape the matrix? To answer this question, I will analyze and critique the main point in the work that was the primary philosophical source of inspiration for the Wachowskis when making the matrix. But before that, I want to ask you, if it was possible to escape the matrix and the real world was a world with much more hardship, like in the movie, would you really want to escape it? Or rather stay in ignorant bliss? Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section below. The primary philosophical sources of inspiration for the Wachowskis when making The Matrix was Simulacra and Simulation by Sean Baudrillard, a French sociologist and philosopher, and one of the most prominent thinkers within the school of postmodernism. When preparing for The Matrix Reloaded, the Wachowskis invited Baudrillard to come on board as an advisor, but he turned them down since they, according to him, had misunderstood his work entirely and had come to the opposite conclusion regarding one's ability to escape the matrix. I'll come back to this soon. There can be no doubt that his work was a major source of inspiration for the Wachowskis. When making the first film, they asked Keanu Reeves to read Simulacra and Simulation as preparation for the role. It's also the book that Neo keeps his hacker discs in in the beginning of the film. And when Morpheus says welcome to the desert of the real, that phrase has been lifted directly from the book. But as mentioned earlier, Baudrillard wasn't interested. He made his feelings on the matter quite clear in an interview later on. The Matrix is surely the kind of film about the Matrix that the Matrix would have been able to produce. So what is his theory really about? He argues that the world after the Second World War became postmodern. This world is made up of simulation and simulacra, where simulation is an image or representation of someone or something real. Simulacra, on the other hand, is something that is so divorced from the real that it's not even trying to model reality anymore. We no longer interact with things, but instead interact with images of things, and maybe even images of images of things. Take pop culture within movies as an example. Movies today is an incredible meta-referential feeding frenzy where one generation clearly builds upon the next. This is completely in line with the plot of The Matrix. But unlike the Wachowskis, Baudrillard doesn't think that we can be red-pilled into seeing the world for what it really is. On the contrary, he believes that existence is meaningless and that there is no real world or truth to seek. We are caught in an ever-increasing simulacra-constituted world. In other words, Baudrillard doesn't think that it is possible to escape the Matrix. He simply doesn't think there is a reality to escape to. Instead, simulacra has become reality. Even though technological advances have undoubtedly changed our perception of what is real and made it easier for the media and politicians to manipulate us, it does not follow from this premise that truth does not exist. In fact, one doesn't have to look any further than the postulate truth does not exist to see a flaw in his logic, because it leads to a paradox. If the postulate truth does not exist is true, then truth does not exist, hence it cannot be true. The mistake Baudrillard makes is to conflate metaphysics, the study of reality, with epistemology, the study of knowledge. A problem that Baudrillard and other postmodernist thinkers have in common is what the correspondence theory of truth brings to the table. As far as we know, the theory has been used within the field of metaphysics since Aristotle. It states that the truth or falsity of a statement is determined only by how it relates to the world and whether it accurately describes that world. Just because simulacra is making it hard for us to know if our knowledge of what is true is actually true, it does not mean that truth does not exist. But Baudrillard's theory may still be partly valid. It could be that human beings are incapable of distinguishing between simulacra and objective truth. Because of this, the question how can we escape the matrix is, in my opinion, not the right question to ask. A better question would be, how can we tell the difference between the matrix and the real world, between simulacra and truth? But we shouldn't get our hopes up. The answer might very well be that we can't ever truly know if we're in a matrix world. 
because the correspondence theory of truth can be applied within the matrix as well. The matrix theory can be seen as a metaphysical theory. It is argued by the Australian philosopher David Chalmers that the same rules apply in the matrix as in the real world. As I mentioned earlier, the truth or falsity of a statement is determined only by how it relates to the world and whether it accurately describes that world. What is real? How do you define real? Maybe even if that world is made up of ones and zeros. So click the video if you want to go further down the metaphysical matrix rabbit hole. And remember to like, subscribe and buckle your seatbelt Dorothy, cause Kansas is going bye bye.